So most people will think of Greenland and Antarctica when they think of glaciers, but outside of Greenland and Antarctica, the Himalayas are the third biggest area in the world of snow and ice. So they're often known as the third pole. First, we had to get up there. So that involved walking um, at very high altitudes, very slowly, and getting to about 5,000 metres elevation. You know, it's a very, very big region. We're talking sort of between half a million and a million square kilometres in, in terms of the mountain range area. The locations are distant from settlement. They're deep inside these, these sort of mountain terrain. Actually, sort of physical access is, is quite hard. So Himalayan glaciers are covered in a thick layer of rock debris. And this varies from sort of tiny sand granules to huge um, house-sized boulders. This debris layer acts as a blanket on the glacier and so insulates the glacier from the warming temperatures as the climate changes. But it also makes it really difficult to understand what's happening on the glacier. So this is um, Kumbu Glacier surface and these are huge ice cliffs. You can tell they're huge by the fact that these two little blobs in this red dot are um, well, one's me. You can see how difficult it would be to try and find out what was going on under this debris layer. Because of the debris cover, um, oftentimes these glaciers, the recession, rather than it being a, a lateral recession, actually what's going on is they're thinning. The Himalayas store snow and ice over the course of the year. The big thing is that when that snow arrives, it's stored in the ice and it melts. Each, each summer and each spring you get this melt. Um, and it's a huge volume of water running off that would otherwise be stored. So this was the first time I've been. I thought that we were going to get up there and there'd be no one there and we'd be on our own and the glacier would not be coupled with the humans in Nepal, basically. But actually, you see that they live alongside it. The glacier is a huge part of their life. You know, seeing them washing their clothes in, in local running water supplies and so on. Um, you hear avalanches falling at night onto the glacier. Trekking through the landscape, seeing all the terraced farmland, it really kind of brings home quite how dependent they are on local water resources. So this is a prayer wheel and these line the path as you walk up to Kumbu Glacier. As part of Buddhist culture, water is a hugely important element and these prayer wheels as they turn are meant to um, release good luck. About a fifth of the world's population rely on this glacier-fed water every year for the um, drinking water, for the sanitation, for irrigation for crops and for hydroelectric power. And that's countries like India, China, Bhutan, Nepal and Pakistan. Since the Little Ice Age, Himalayan glaciers have been shrinking, declining. Those changes have been most noticeable, certainly since the, sort of the 1990s, there seems to have been an acceleration. What we have is some very specific data that is for one glacier. By taking this field data, we can use it with the modelling we've already done to try and predict how these glaciers are going to change. What we want to know is what will happen in the future. How much of that water will run off in future years? So as climate change starts to happen, the glacier will melt more. The water increases and so they've got more water for irrigation. But then you get to the point where there isn't enough ice left. Uh, we tend to view the Himalayas as remote, they're far away. We maybe only see climbing trips, the Everest region, but we don't realise just how many people rely on that water for their everyday needs.